I am joined today by Mr. Paul. Hello. Good morning, Andy. How are you doing? Uh, I'm not too bad. Um, it's, like, it's, it's, it's a new setup for my desk today, and it's a little bit throwing me out, but I'm fine. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really well. I've just come back off annual leave, actually, um, on Monday, so we had uh, two weeks off, so I uh, feel refreshed and, and ready to go again for the next season, so I uh, had a good time away. Awesome. Fantastic. I'm loving your bookcase behind you. I just, I love books. I've just had my birthday a little about a month ago, and I had loads and loads of books, and I'm so happy at the massive stack next to my bedside table. Yeah, it's uh, I've got a few on there, but uh, yeah, it makes me look intelligent. I think when uh, when one of them is all single, so. but I have read most of them. Too, yeah. <laughs> Just get some John Stott ones that are you know facing out, and then everyone yeah. knows. If yeah, you've read those right. and you understand them, it's um, you must be all right. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to get to a few different things in the next little while. But you work for Compassion UK now. Compassion UK. I think I've said this before, but a lot of people might have an understanding of the word compassion. We sort of know what we think that means, but just give us a bit of an overview about Compassion UK and what that is all about. Okay, so Compassion UK is part of a, a wider organisation called Compassion International, which is based in um, Colorado Springs in the States. And so there's a number of countries, about 15 or 16 donor countries. We're one of them. And our focus is on and releasing children from poverty in Jesus name. So our, our mission and focus as a ministry is to really engage in communities of severe poverty, which means that we're working with children and families that are literally surviving on less than two dollars a day. So it's working with the poorest of the poor. And we um, at the moment have the privilege of um, working within 29 countries within Central and South America, Africa and Asia and Indonesia. And our model of work really is to work with the local church. We really want to just come alongside the local church and enable the local churches within those communities to serve the children and their families to the best way that they can. And so in the 29 countries that we work in, we've got 8,500 what we call frontline church partners. So those churches all have a compassion child development centre we have staff there that are all from the local um, church and each country has a national office which has a national director. So it's really those countries are leading the way in, in the direction of where they feel the most need is. Often in the West, we can go into spaces of poverty and think, oh, this would be good if we could help them here. But actually, we're about empowering and enabling the locals and the nationals they understand their communities and their people far better than anyone else. And so really, we just want to be able to facilitate that through resource, through finance, to enable them to do the work and see children released from poverty and their families lifted out of poverty. And so that's kind of really um, what we do as an organisation. Our distinctives, uh, we're very much Christ-centred. It's about Jesus. It's about the gospel. It's about the church. And through the church, then really focusing and being church driven and being child focused. We know that the children are the most vulnerable within these communities. And we know if we can begin to reach out to children, give them the education that they deserve, give them nutritional food and medical care, then they have the chance of being lifted out of poverty. It's about giving them hope, giving them a future and obviously them hearing uh, the gospel and responding to um, to Jesus. I do remember um, in a church about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, a group of folks went out to this country in Africa and they went and worked where one of the guys had been before. Let's go out and see the people I've been here and all that. And they were doing some stuff. I think it was picking bananas and all that uh, sort of hard work as part of what they were doing. They were doing some missions work at night. But when they kept working, once the sun went down, the locals said, why aren't you going home? like all the other people who've come from around the world to help us. They just come, take some photos and leave. And this is their words. And they said, well, we're not here for the photo opportunity. We're here for the long haul help. We don't just want to come and get look at us. We want to actually help you. And that means we work while you work. And I, I would imagine in a similar kind of vein, that's what Compassion UK is doing, because you're not just dropping in, you know, dropping in some, here's a pallet of food, off you go. Actually, it's, it's that longer haul thing. It's that education, isn't it? Yeah, it's long-term sustainable development. And so we really believe that, um, you know, again, 
um, the, the nationals, the local people. It's about empowering them and resourcing them. And so our work very much is on um, giving the local um, church leaders the, the resources they need for, for them and their own people to be able to reach out into their community. And so even when we do interventions, so we engage in water interventions, there's um, there's some interventions that may involve um, training, child protection or building toilet blocks or classrooms. We very much want to resource the local people to be able to do that. Um, they have gifts, they have talents, they have abilities, they have the call of God on their lives. And so rather than um, people like ourselves going out and facilitating that for them or, or taking a team over to build, you know, a toilet block, we want to actually um, invest in their own economy and get local builders to do the work. And so very, it's very much about empowering and enabling them to do um, what they can. They're capable uh, but just they lack resource really so so that's why you know the long term sustainable impact is because we're empowering the local the locals to do that and, and with one of our models within the ministry that we're working with with the child sponsorship for example that is just giving a steady flow of finance which really enables the church to serve the children and, and give them access to to um to um to medicine to school, to um, food, and to be part of a program which is really developing and discipling them into through their childhood and, and teenage years, and 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 so it's that long term commitment to them as as a child that sees them break the cycle of poverty. Um, you know, we know that the answer isn't overnight or in the short term; mm -hmm. it's that long term sustainable impact, and so the sponsorships that we encourage people to engage with and you know we're grateful that we've got over a hundred thousand children at the minute sponsored through the generosity of christians throughout the uk that really is making such a transformational difference because it's over years and over time that they're really being developed and um and we've got that commitment to to see them grow grow over that, that period of time um so we're seeing you know, tremendous change, not just within children's lives, but the ripple effect into their families, into the church, into the communities. And um, and we, we'll see a transformation, you know, happen within um, the countries that we, we have the privilege of working in. One of the words you used was steady. That's that, that keep on going. It, it's that continual day after day, week after week, not just, you know, sort of carpet bombing help, which... Yeah, sometimes that's needed, but actually it's that longer term. And I also love the way you're talking about working with people on the ground. If you're employing, employing a builder from the UK to fly over to, I don't know, wherever, then you've got to fly them over with all their equipment. And, and all of a sudden they're working in ways that aren't necessarily helpful where you are, because they can't just pop down to the local builder's merchant and get a bag of sand or cement. But if you're working in the country with a builder who's there, they know their own building approaches they know the resources they can get and all of a sudden it's a completely easier i would imagine i'm mean, this is me thinking but it must be it must be simpler just on that one that one part of it of building something using somebody who's local yeah again you know part there's, there's many different aspects that contribute to severe poverty but one of them is um you know a lack of jobs and, and resources within those communities so if we can enable the locals to bring their skills and their experience to engage in the things that the community needs, then we're helping their economy, which ultimately helps yeah. them within the context of their poverty. And so, you know, um, that's one of the things we we very much um, focus on. And and with and with the way that we work, um, because Compassion partners with the local church, and we've got a div child development centre there. Um, all the finances that come and throw through our or flow through our organization it doesn't get necessarily just the money is not given to the local pastor in a sense it it goes through the project it's all accounted for um so we we're confident that the money that's given is going to the places that we're saying it's going to it's going to mm. um be invested in the right things and so all that um 
you know, is accounted for um, throughout our organisation. And so we we believe that then gives people confidence to be able to invest in some kind of way within the ministry and work of compassion uh, in the global context, um, because we know that people are giving sacrificially um, to to help and to to serve the heart of God um, with the poor and the marginalised. And so we want to make sure we're being excellent stewards of the finances that are given. And so that gives us confidence that we know the money is being distributed in, in the right means. Awesome. I, 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 I just love when, when an organisation talks about we want to work with a local church, whether that's UK working with local UK churches or UK working with somewhere in Sudan or Egypt or South America or wherever, people who work with other churches, that, that it just makes me so excited having worked in churches in the past because the local church often has people, like you say, with gifts and skills, but we kind of also need somebody who can come along and say, this is how we can open the door to this particular gift or this skill. And this is how we can use that gift and skill in this area, because sometimes it's very hard to see what you've got on your own doorstep. It maybe just takes a second set of eyes to open our eyes to what's possible. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we do, we've got a partnerships team here in the UK and our work very much is, is connecting with local churches here in the UK and, and uh, exploring partnership um, so that we are able to be, you know, a gateway, if you like, for local churches to engage in um, serving the poorest of the, of the poor in a global context. Often um, people and churches want to give and want to serve in that way, but they're not sure how and um, and going through, you know, um, avenues that are trustworthy. And so when we when we um, partnering with churches around the UK, we very much give them an opportunity to um, you know, create a space for us to come and share about our work and um, people respond and sponsor children, but then also churches, you know, they raise finance or they may take a portion of their missions budget and invest that finance into one, a, into a particular intervention that we're doing within, um, within the countries as well. So we really want to give churches an opportunity to engage with the heart of God for the poor in a global context but without it taking their time and focus in a sense really from their local church and the work that God's called them to do within their own geographical community. And so I know I've been involved in global missions for many years. And when you're planning overseas trips and budgeting and working out all these different dynamics, all of that takes a lot of time and focus out of what you know we can be doing within our local missions. And so we really want to serve the, the church here in the UK in providing an opportunity to say, hey, you can engage in having a transformational impact, but without it taking too much time from what you're feeling God wants you to do within your own communities and really empowering you know, your, the, their church community to engage in those different initiatives and projects in, in, in reaching out to those that are in need and with the gospel within their you know towns cities and villages really and so we feel that um, we're given an opportunity uh, to have a transformational impact um and can serve in that way without it being too much uh, taking too much time and focus from them and, and their staff I, I love that approach um to support them with i mean that but that is the thing isn't it because compassion is working with local churches here near where you are based you know same nation and yet you're it's the same mentality that you've got here in the uk as as the churches you're serving it's how can we equip and serve and how can we help i love that it is absolutely and and really our heart is to enable the local church within these communities of severe, severe poverty um through giving them the resources so our holistic discipleship program that every child and currently we're serving 2.3 million children um you know across these countries and but that model is flexible and it's adaptable to every community and every child because um every every community and child's um you know reality of severe poverty is very, very different and unique mm. and so we can adapt that model and each child will have a personal you know care worker that works with them in their development and so we can take a unique approach um, because it's not one size fits all there's many different things in play when it comes to severe poverty 
and how that looks in communities and the reasons behind that. And so we want to be able to adapt that model into different contexts so that we're ensuring we're serving those children and their families in the best way possible and empowering the local church to do that. So when when a child is sponsored, it's not like, you know, I sponsor a child with my family. We're not the saviour. We're not the hero in the story. We just have the privilege of playing our small part in serving these children. And so I know that the money that we give is just empowering the local church um, leader, their leadership, the Compassion Child Development uh, Centre and all the staff there and the church community to serve these children. You know, the, the child is part, you know, their, their community is very much, you know, their family, their local church leader, the Child Development Centre and the project they're part of. And, and we're part of that because we're able to give and, and, and write to our ch- the children that we sponsor if, if we um, if we want to do that. We, we encourage people to do that because we know that writing letters, um, the prayers and words of affirmation and encouragement make a huge difference into children's lives. We know that words have power. They have power to bring life or death. And those words of life that we can bring um, make a, a significant difference. And so we're just a part of the bigger picture of what God's doing in in the lives um, of the children and and the communities that they're a part of. And we know from independent research that over 75% of children that we work with, they go on to be, um, to have a place in influential positions within um, leadership, whether it's within their local church, within something that they go on to do in terms of their career, but they are people of influence, which ultimately, you know, you start multiplying that over yeah. the next, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. You just you don't know how God's going to use um, each individual child to have an impact um, in their lives, within the lives of others. So that ripple effect and multiplication is is something that um, we know God is very much in and, and using within within the context of and the children and families and churches that we have the privilege of working with. Um, taking it back a little bit in time then, what what was your journey into compassion and what's your background? And how did you find yourself one day turning up at an office thinking, I actually work for Compassion UK? Yeah. You know, I think for me, you know, I, th- I think we can look back on our lives and pinpoint moments where we feel that the Holy Spirit just did something significant in our lives and I remember when I was 16 years old, I was um, a naive teenager and I went on my first local, um, you know, short term mission trip here in the UK to, to London. And it was very much back in the day where, you know, you wore those hideous shell suits and you kind of did the open air outreach and you did dance and drama and shared your story about how God, had, you know, transform your life. And so we were doing um, this in Leicester Square. And, you know, a particular guy caught my eye. He had a long green trench coat on and a top hat. And um, I went over and introduced myself. And um, and, and his name was Clinton. He'd been on the streets for 25 years. And I just sat down, had a bit of a conversation with him. He came, came back the following day. I, I asked him if I could take him for lunch at Burger King. So he had a nice greasy burger, fries and a, and a thick shake, you know. And <laughs> and we, we just carried on talking. And I prayed with him and he, he accepted Jesus into his life. And at the end of that day, um, you know, we, we got together as a team and and someone said, you know, hey, is there any kind of testimonies and stories from what God's done today? And Clint was standing alongside me and put his hand up. And he basically, the guy that, you know, he basically said, you got nothing to say and he ignored him. And that broke me really. But as I look back, I feel that that moment was a moment where God really gave me a heart for the poor, the marginalised and for mission. Mm-hmm. And so throughout, you know, my 30 odd years involved in local churches, um, I've been youth pastoring, been doing missions, and um, and that's been my background, really. And I've done a lot of overseas mission trips. But then five years ago, a friend of mine um, just reached out to me. I was in a season of transition, and he said, hey, there's a, there's a role going at Compassion UK. I think, you know, the role would be a really good fit for you. So it was uh, June 2019. I applied, was successful with the role, and um, I've just been, you know, there just over five years now. So my role's evolved over over the time, but work within partnerships. Um, I'm a strategic development partnerships manager, 
And so very much involved in a team that uh, working with and reaching out to local churches that currently partner with us. So we're looking to strengthen those partnerships and then seeking new partnerships um, with, with local churches. Um, and so we very much, you know, uh, email and, and, and call and, and try to meet with church leaders um, in, in their heart for, for mission and the local church and, and what God's put on their heart, share our heart and ministry and, and, and just see if there's some alignment and, and see and if we can stand together in um, in what God's doing uh, across the world in terms of serving um, children in, in severe poverty. And so, um, you know, it's an absolute privilege to be able to do what I do. I love I love what the work that we do. I feel called to it and um, and, and, and what God's doing through the local church um, here in the UK is, as they seek to serve those children and what he's doing um, you know, within the countries that we're working is is absolutely tre- tremendous. And I've got the privilege, actually, a week on Sunday going out to Uganda for seven days. We're doing a vision trip with some church leaders um, just to, you know, let them go and, and see the work that we do and, and how it all works and um, and to get the opportunity to do that and, and see other, other churches, you know, around uh, the UK come on board with us and stand together within this space is um is fantastic um the thing that i'm picking up on from from your story so far you you meet this guy something amazing happens and then something negative happens but actually that in a sense bad thing that kind of goes on to define in a good way the rest of your life and i i speak to so many people where this thing that we think oh this is terrible at the moment in that moment but actually, God uses that in in some way to to trigger in us, or in to empower us, or impassion us, and it sort of defines the rest of our life. So I love how, as a sixteen year old, you're having a conversation, and now you're five years at Compassion after you know thirty years or whatever. But but here you are, and God is still using that that moment of I want to serve people, and yet you're able to do it in a very different context. But that same heart is still there. Absolutely, and the lesson for me, Andy, is that actually God chose to use a man who was homeless who had absolutely nothing been on the streets for 25 years to impact my life and often you know we can look down at the poor and the marginalized we can ignore them you know we know that through scripture jesus you know spoke um and you know with the heart to reach out he often reached out to those that you know the religious leaders were ignoring within that time um but i found in my life that even with working with compassion and having the opportunity to go out to the field those that have nothing you know are poor are rich in so many other ways and one of the things that i always find challenging when i go to the field is um i was just talking about this actually to a colleague yesterday um you know the scripture the joy of the lord is my strength mm. um they epitomize that scripture they have absolutely nothing very very little and there's a there's a there's a, 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 a significant difference between joy and happiness mm. you know that joy is deep it's it's rooted in god and, and they carry that and um it's amazing how god uses um, the poor to, to impact our lives and um, and the lessons that they can teach us. You know, I think for us, it's not just us helping and serving them. It, it's it's a partnership. We, we we come in as equal partners. There's a there's a there's a church leader in um, in Uganda called Pastor Fred, who's one of our frontline church partner lead uh, church leaders, and and he says in a video that we come as equal partners. We're not coming in as like we know best. We're coming and saying, hey, we've got this resource. We've got this model of ministry that we've been doing for over 70 years. We know it works. And how can we stand alongside you and serve you and your people to impact and transform these children and their families' lives? And so we come in on an equal level. Um, you know, people within the countries that we work in, they're highly skilled, highly educated, knowledgeable you know they understand their culture their context their communities and so we just want to stand alongside them and use the resource that god's given us particularly here with 
within Compassion UK through the generosity of Christians and churches and really be great stewards of that finance to see impact and transformation take place within the countries that we work in. And taking it back to your uh, your faith journey then, where did faith begin for you? What, what's your background? I mean, was it walking along? Is it a Damascus Road experience like my wife would have? Or was it more sort of mine where I just thought, yeah, this church thing's all right, better carry on. Well, when I was a, when I was a kid, I was involved in the, uh, the the scout Cubs and Scout movement, and so I was a cub, and then I wanted to be in the scouts. And 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 the, the scouts in the town that I was part of, they they used to meet at the, the the local Baptist church, and every so often, I think it was once or twice a year, the scouts would get to take part in in the morning church service. And I remember my particular role on this occasion was to stand up and announce the the hymn um you know so it was back in the day where you kind of say we're going to sing hymn number 328 the lord's my shepherd it can be found on page you know so and so and so that was my role when my mum came to support me um my mum and dad are are great parents and um, they support me all all of my life but uh, my mum came to support me and she really felt moved during the service so she went back for the evening service and that kind of began her faith journey really she she quickly um responded to to christ and 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 gave her life to the lord and became a youth leader and so i was about 13 at the time and i started to go to the youth group and i'd only been going a couple of months and there was like a youth weekend going on so i said oh yeah i'll go to that and it was after that weekend when i got home on the sunday night i was given like remember the journey into life little tracks that you used to get We've it was one, one of them, the Reddit. I said the prayer. I rang my youth leader. I said, I've just asked Jesus into my life. And so that's where my faith journey began, really. And then my, my sister also came to faith and, and my dad as well. So as a family, we came to faith in the mid 80s, really, uh, um, and was involved in the youth group there. Then I got involved in the kids' work and then became a youth leader. And uh, I was involved in youth ministry for uh, 20 years, um, along with my wife, Helen. and. Um, and so been very active and very much part of local church um, for the last 30 odd years. And so that's where it all began, really. Um, we we all have a story. Yeah. And, and you know, for me, it I can look at it and it was, it's like it's not like spectacular. It's not, you know, a, a Damascus Road type of experience. But what I love is that God saves us. Um, you know, all equally and all, and all the same. And, you know, I, I, I didn't have to go through some some challenges and some tough things that some people do, whether it's, you know, alcohol or drug abuse or, you know, whatever it is. And, and have some, you know, some people have come from really, you know, um, terrible circumstances and backgrounds and God's stepped in and and rescued them from that. You know, I, I, I had a, I've had a very... Um, you know, a great upbringing, great childhood. My life in general has been, has been easy in many ways um, and very normal, but the grace of God, the love of God and the, the transformational um, aspect of the gospel has been, been very real um, in, in my life. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for all that God's done really um, over the 53 years on the planet so far. I love how you're talking about that kind of normal family. My parents were there. I went to church and, but actually I, I'm, I can also hear from what you were saying in your work with compassion UK, that, 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 that enjoyment as a, as a young person, as a, as a youth, as, as a young adult in that kind of, I suppose a secure environment, maybe one way of putting it, you, I can see your heart and passion into what you're doing saying, I want others to have the same sort of opportunity, not to have the same opportunity because it's different but that same steadying secure kind of upbringing with education and and, and family and employment that, that i can see that passion into what you're doing with compassion uk yeah and i find that the extraordinary um you know power love grace of god is very much wrapped up in the ordinary you know often you know i think as christians we can look for those highlights and those mountaintop experiences it's like you know waiting for god to do something like you know spectacular when actually what jesus really wants for us he wants our hearts he just wants that daily discipleship you know to come and pray and and read his word and allow him in it often 
in, in, in the quiet still place as well i find that um you know that's where god you know works within our lives and you know particularly when we go through challenging and tough times in our lives and seasons that you know are, are, are difficult and tough that's where if we allow god he just brings that change into our lives and strengthens us and and enables us to grow you know into the person that you know he he wants us to be you know to be more christ-like and uh, you know i find that you know it's very much that day-to-day almost rhythm routine that's where god is powerful and at work is we just allow him to to build into our lives you know a day at a time and for sure there's some times where god moves and there's something incredible happens but it's like let's not just live for those moments and kind of just wait in between it's like let's just keep being diligent within our you know our faith and even the questions that we may have you know we, we haven't got all um the answers to everything i've got questions of why did that happen and how about this and that and the other but it's like but that's that's what faith is it's that it's that hope that we have and you know we haven't we, we're not meant to work it all out you know if we knew everything then we'd be god wouldn't we so i think um you know it's about trusting god in in the journey in the process and when difficult times come you know last year a year ago yesterday actually was my dad's funeral you know i lost my dad just over a year ago and it was a devastating time i was close to my dad it's the it's the first time i've experienced grief at that level Um, but even in the midst of all of that season the loving kindness of god was incredible um you know when he was he was with us he walked through and uh, that season with us and he's still with us now and even with my mum and, and my family you know they're, they're tough times but, but we've got the hope that you know my dad has gone on to eternities in heaven and even though we miss him deeply and um it can be you know tough on some days um you know god's with us in in all of in all of that as well and so um so yeah you know we're just you know deeply thankful for for god's faithfulness and the way he strengthens us and sustains us mm. in our lives you know yeah it, it, it's tough when those things come but then when you have that knowledge and certainty of who christ is then that that, that carries you through and the happiness and joy that you, you mentioned a while back you know happiness we all pursue happiness we all want to have to be happy and our kids to be happy and to be happy in our jobs but but all that can come and go with illness and disease and death and this happens but but that joy that joy is everlasting and it does sort of well up from within us and as we you know as we know god it, it comes out of us doesn't it it does yeah and i think you know it, it, when i went, even last year when i was going through you know and i knew my dad was you know his life was coming towards um the end here on, on earth and i was you know uh, i thought well I, you know i've had you know 53 years with my dad he was he was 79 and then i kind of think about other people and how they haven't had that opportunity you know some children lose their parents when they're young and I, then i think about the context of the work that we we're in and you know there's over five million children under the age of five that die every year from pre- preventable disease you know when they lose their parents and you know it's it's horrific really just the circumstances that they face within within um you know these communities of severe poverty and that you know um you kind of think about all those things and it just brings perspective mm. you know and um i think you know it's um having that posture of gratitude of being and being thankful for for what we have and i know that even in the context of the communities we work in the countries we work in you know so often the people that we meet and work with they're, they're grateful for what they have and oh god is just providing them in that basic just some of the basic fundamental things we need as human beings really um and so yeah um how can we get involved with compassion uk you, you're talking about some of the projects you talked about local churches getting involved in sponsoring a child but just uh, open that up for a little bit that makes more sense for people who've never come across this how could somebody like me in the uk sponsor a child the other side of the world that i don't meet how what's that all about how does that work okay so if people are interested in you know find out more about us as an organization they can visit our website which is www.compassionuk.org and on the website there's information about our ministry um our values where we work 
And there's an opportunity on the website to um, sponsor a child. It's quite an easy process to go through. They can just click on a child that they feel drawn towards and, and, and go through the process and sponsor. If um, a sponsorship is £32 a month, and that gives the child um, access to education, they become part of the Compassion Project. Um, well, they, they actually already are part of the project, actually, but obviously the support, you know, finances that into the future. They get they go to projects every Saturday at their local church. They're involved in um, recreational activities and, and are developed and get nutritional food and as have access to, to medical care as well. So, you know, if they get diarrhea or malaria, we can they've got access to the medication that will prevent them from potentially dying as a, as a child. So, I mean, it's, it's a huge opportunity to, to engage and, 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 and be part of a child's life to cease transformation. So they can, they can sponsor if people think, well, 32 pounds a month is too much for me. It's a bit of a stretch. There's an opportunity just to go online and, and donate. We've got like a shop where you can go and donate different amounts um, and which will give money towards different uh, parts of our ministry um and then for for anyone that's listening that's involved in local church leadership then again on the website there'll be some there'll be some details there where you can connect and, and get someone like myself one of our partnership managers to to just meet over coffee and have an informal conversation and and see you know how how that you know transpires and leads forward and, and what partnership could look like for their local church you know often it starts with us being present at a, at a church service, sharing about our work and giving people an opportunity within the congregation to to, to sponsor, you know, a child. So, um, so yeah, visit the website and um, there's there's opportunities on there to 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 give and to sponsor and to maybe connect with the partnerships team and um, and, and and explore church partnership even on that level as well. I love the idea that we can um, help people. We, we can't do everything, and none of us can do everything, but all of us can do something. And Absolutely. if everyone wanted to us did something, what a world we'd have. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've even, you know, I think with with um, what we're doing, even with the uh, interventions and different things, we've got business people that are engaging with us that are sharing some of their wealth through our ministry to, you know, whether it's to support a child survival unit, which, you know, is working with vulnerable babies and mums, uh, which probably costs about £12,000 a year, or maybe investing in some of the projects. Um, we've got people that are giving on all different levels, but, you know, like you say, you know, we can all do something and it's taking that which we have and, and, and sowing it in, in, in a way that can be used to bring transformation to these uh, people and places and spaces, you know. So, so yeah, um, the website's a great place to begin. Um, with that i don't think we can finish anywhere else better than really that we can we can all do something to bring transformation to somebody else um just give us that one uh, website just one more time so it's fresh in people's minds yeah it's www.compassionuk.org um thank you so much paul it's been a privilege uh, and, a, and a joy to learn about compassion yes but i love people's stories and i love people's stories into what they're doing because i see so many people and it's just that interweaving of moments that make no sense until we look back and think how did that happen and then we realize god's in our life and we see a transformation which is what the work you're doing so paul thank you so much for your time work at compassion uk and for your time with me today thank you thank you andy bless you Here at Pure 24-7 Radio, we have had the privilege of speaking to some amazing people with amazing stories. So I was already doing the work of an evangelist, and then I discovered that there was a term for it. And then I realized, well, I, I really wanted to learn more about the Bible and Christianity. So I went to theological college. Most people think that my life as a marine biologist was spent riding on the back of a dolphin into the sunset. That's and, my view. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that. Ne never. <laughs> been on the road 35 years man and boy doing magic and comedy to communicate the gospel when i started off in 88 i was doing escapology i kind of took that on from a friend of mine called pete gilbert who was a real pioneer in creative communication if you have missed any of these interviews or would like to hear them again you can simply head over to our catch-up section at www.pure247radio.org 
That's www.pure247radio.org.